Thank you very much. Please sit. The Chancellor of the Miva Open University, Mr. Sim Shagaya, and his wife, Dr. Tonia Shagaya. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Tayo Arulogun, the Registrar and Management of Miva Open University, the fact of the Miva Open University, and all the newly inducted professors of practice, the matriculating class of 2024, former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, the acting executive secretary of the Nigeria University Commission, Mr. Chris Mayaki, parents, guardians, friends, and colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure indeed to join you today at this second matriculation ceremony of this incredibly unique university, the MIVA Open University. And I must especially thank the chancellor of the university and the visioner and pioneer of Nigeria's, I believe, the first fully operational private open university, Mr. Sim Shagaya, for the very kind invitation to give this keynote speech. And perhaps more importantly, congratulate him and his team for the establishment of this history-making virtual citadel of learning, research, and innovation. And to the matriculating class of 2024, may I offer my heartfelt congratulations. This day marks the beginning of an extraordinary journey in higher education, one that places you at the forefront of a revolutionary model that redefines learning with unparalleled innovation. May I also pay special tribute to the esteemed faculty of Miva Open University, uh, a distinguished body of scholars and academics charged with the profound responsibility of shaping the future of tertiary education. It is your role to train a new generation of leaders, leaders who will be equipped not only to navigate but to thrive and innovate in a world defined by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. I must also say how excited I am to be in the company of university teachers, scholars, and students. Teaching is my first love, and I've been a university teacher now for, I think, 43 years or so. I started teaching. <laughs> I, I started teaching at the University of Lagos when I was 24. So I've been a teacher for most of my life. Let me say straight away that the MIVA Open University is the future of university education, brought at high speed to the present day. And there is no way that higher education in Africa can be effectively delivered to the number of those who want university degrees if we have to build physical universities to accommodate them. Why? Every year, just as the Chancellor had pointed out, more than 1.7 million applicants write the uh, UTME exams conducted by uh, JAM. And an average, I think, of about 400,000 gain admission to the universities. So there is 1.3 million, mostly young people, who annually are eligible but do not have an opportunity for university education. Consider that Nigeria also is growing at about six million people every single year. There is absolutely no way that a brick and mortar approach to providing infrastructure for university education can ever work. We must also realize, and when I say we, I mean education policy makers, teachers, students, and employers of labor, that education as we knew it is gone forever. Now and in the future, what we will teach, how we will teach, will never be the same again. 
This change is motivated by the type and quality of employee that the market wants today and that the market will take for granted tomorrow. And also how technology, especially artificial intelligence and machine learning, is rapidly transforming business, the professions, and the entire marketplace. The innovative, efficient, tech-savvy, problem-solving employee who is a skilled collaborator or co-creator is what the employer wants today. So how do we achieve that? First, with teaching. The emphasis is going to be on critical thinking and problem solving. Information gathering, memorizing, and regurgitating information is dead. There is so much information and analysis of information already. And that is even made more versatile by uh, intelligent systems, the AI tools, and all that. So the emphasis now is not on how much information you have, but how you can use that information to solve real-life problems. And real-life problems are many and varied, and not tied to the curricula in many of the old and existing disciplines. So welcome to the new world also of modular education. Modular education includes micro-credentials and digital badges, and these are short trainings targeted at providing students with particular skills or knowledge, usually specifically required in a particular industry or profession. So for example, the, the IBM's digital badging programs may offer micro-credentials in areas like cloud computing, blockchain, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, et cetera. The sorts of programs that are offered, I believe, in the Department of Computer Science here. Micro-credentials focus on critical high demand skills, preparing learners to work in specialized areas without requiring a full degree. So micro-education could potentially rival university degrees in the future, especially as the world of work and learning continues to evolve. So teaching methods and resources are changing and must continue to evolve. Learning will be increasingly personalized in other words, students will be able to learn at their own pace. This is now possible and will become the norm as greater use is made of data-based insights. Adaptive learning platforms can now, as you know, use artificial intelligence to design even coursework to meet the specific needs of every individual student and the best pace at which to teach each student. We are also going to see more teaching using virtual and augmented reality. All these sorts of equipment are already available. Technologies uh, that use these immersive tools would provide hands-on learning that can be repeated over and over again by the student. All of this is changing, changing education and will permanently change how disciplines, especially like law, medicine, architecture, engineering, and the arts are taught. So using these tools, all these new tools, for example, uh, I, I, I witnessed uh, how uh, virtual reality and some of these other tools are used in orthopedic surgery. This will, and what it does is that it provides hands-on learning experience in a virtual environment. Students using VR can explore 3D high-resolution models of the human body especially the uh, musculoskeletal system, in a fully immersive virtual environment. They can manipulate bones, tissues, and joints from various angles, allowing them to understand anatomy. Using virtual reality, students can perform complete orthopedic surgeries in virtual operating rooms. They can practice complex procedures like joint replacement or fracture fixation in a risk-free environment. The VR system can simulate real-life scenarios, such as handling surgical tools, bone drilling, or tissue manipulation, providing valuable hands-on experience. For lawyers in training, the same principle works. They'll be able to participate in virtual courtroom environment. And unlike in-person teaching, which is one-off and for multiple students, this provides almost personalized training 
and of course, uh, repeat of the process until the student is satisfied. But let me uh, uh, share a few minutes uh, of some wisdom from uh, a, a fairly old uh, and experienced gentleman now, after very, very many years on earth, with the matriculating students. What, in my humble view, is the soul of real success? I believe that real success has a soul. It has a DNA. And that real success is not just doing well for a few years or gathering some internet followers for some time. Real success is leaving a lasting impact through your work, your contributions to society, or the values that you are able to impart to others. It is about what endures beyond one's immediate lifetime. What then are some of the critical must-haves or must-dos for real success? What are these critical things? The first is integrity. And integrity might sound like cliche today, but it is absolutely the cornerstone of real success. Let your yes be yes. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be known for your consistency in applying high moral values or principles. If you borrow money, repay. And I'm not going to tell you a story about borrowing money and repaying, but because we don't have enough time. Don't make promises you can't fulfill. Integrity pays. It is getting scarcer it's getting more difficult to find people of integrity. So it is in demand. And I can say that because integrity or people of integrity are in demand, they are much sought after by everyone. Even thieves are looking for men and women of integrity to keep their stolen money with. <laughs> Life. <laughs> Life is, a, life is a marathon. It's not a 100-meter dash. The person who will last that marathon is a trustworthy person because trust is the currency of business and interpersonal relationships. If you are known to have no integrity, everyone will, everyone will soon know it. And because many of the best opportunities you will get will be based on recommendations, it is easy to become unmarketable. The other must-haves are hard work and diligence. Again, they may sound like cliches, but being smart and talented is great. But one of the many reasons why many smart and talented people don't succeed is that they are not hardworking and they're not diligent. Diligence is key. The ability to do important things, even when they're boring, consistently and dutifully, day after day, is harder to find than talent. The ability to start and finish a task, especially when it's over a long period and there is little or no supervision, is much harder to achieve than being smart. And I must say to you that good training for diligence is to read books from the beginning to the end. Every once in a while, train yourself by reading a, book, a, a good book from the beginning to the end. It's good training for perseverance. As Steve Jobs said, and many of us, of course, are familiar with the uh, name Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, he said that I am convinced that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance, the ability to see things to the end. The third critical element, and this is a subject that has occupied my mind for a while, and I will spend just a little more time on it, it is what has been described as the power of collaboration or co-creation. The power of collaboration or co-creation. Somewhere in the Old Testament of the Bible, I, I believe it's in Genesis, God said concerning uh, a group of people who had decided to build a tower that will reach the heavens. He said, they all speak the same language. And after this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. This was the almighty God speaking about people who had decided to come together to build a tower that will reach the heavens. And God himself said that once this human species that he created 
unite to do something, it will be impossible to stop them. Whatever they unite to do will simply happen. This is the power of collaboration. And collaboration is simply defined as working with others to execute an idea or solve a problem. It is unlikely that there is any greater force that drives change and transformation as the force of united action or collaboration. Several of the world's biggest problems have been solved by the power of collaboration. There is limitless power in human synergy. The collective genius of several minds working together on any project creates a dynamic by which the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts. Collaboration amplifies the strengths of the collaborators and transcends their individual limitations, giving birth to innovation that defies the ordinary constraints of normal human potential. Almost every phenomenal achievement, every one of those achievements in science, in technology, even in the arts, is an awesome triumph of collaboration. Indeed, in the past few decades, especially in science and technology, the Nobel Prizes, the, no the awards of Nobel Prizes, have been awarded to teams of scientists as opposed to individuals, underscoring the fact that teamwork is what is taking us into the future. And there are so many notable examples of achievements by collaboration, and I'll just take us through a few. The creation of the internet, with which we are very familiar, was, as you know, the result of decades of collaborative work between governments, agencies, universities, and private companies. Pioneers like Vince Cerf and Bob Kahn, who developed the transmission uh, control protocol and uh, the internet protocol itself, worked with teams across institutions to create the foundation of the modern internet. The World Wide Web, developed by Tim Berners-Lee at CERN, was another collaborative effort that turned the internet into a user-friendly platform for, for communication and information exchange. Man's first landing on the moon, on the Apollo 11, is a tribute to the power of collaboration. The Apollo program was a monumental collaborative effort involving over 400,000 engineers, scientists, and technicians from multiple industries, universities, and government agencies, including NASA, from the development of the spacecraft to the complex calculations necessary for the mission's success, the Apollo program was a testament to the power of human collaboration on a grand scale. It required coordinated efforts across disciplines like physics, engineering, computer science, biology, all working towards the shared goal of safely taking astronauts to the moon and bringing them back. Now we have the International Space Station, the International Space Station, the ISS, is a symbol of global collaboration in space exploration, a partnership between the US, Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada. The ISS was assembled in orbit over decades, over decades. Countries agreed to work together. And they've now achieved what would have been thought impossible only a few years ago. How about the famous Manhattan Project? which led to the development of the first nuclear bomb during World War II. And then, since then, several, nuclear, several advances in nuclear physics. This was a massive collaborative effort involving scientists from the US, the UK, and Canada. Over 130,000 people worked on the project, including some of the greatest minds in physics, as you know, like uh, Oppenheimer, Fermi, and Niels Bohr. All of these people came together because they, it was impossible for one person within the time frame given to develop the various ideas necessary to develop nuclear physics in the way that it was developed. One of the most significant scientific breakthroughs of all time is the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project was a massive scientific effort that aimed to map out all the genes in the human DNA. The project, which began in 1990, was completed only in 2003, involved scientists from many countries working together. By the end of the project, they had successfully mapped the human genome, which consists of now, as we now know, over 20,000 genes and 3 million letters of DNA. The project revolutionized our understanding of genetics and laid the groundwork 
for advances in medicine, biotechnology, and personalized healthcare. How about the collaboration between art and technology that gave birth to the Pixar Animation Studios? Artists, animators, computer scientists collaborated to develop groundbreaking films like Toy Story, the world's first fully computer animated feature film. We all, of course, are familiar with Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg was the original visioner and programmer behind the Facebook, but he had for at least four collaborators. Eduardo Saverin, who was involved in the business side, Andrew McCollum, who was involved in the early design aspects and then designed the site's logo and other uh, user interface icons. Dustin Moscovich, he assisted with programming and expanding the platform. Chris Hughes played a role in promoting and managing the early stages of Facebook. You may not remember their names today, you may remember only Mark Zuckerberg but Facebook would have been impossible without their collaboration. And Della, the three billion, now I believe is worth three billion or even more, uh, tech company, known for training tech talents in Africa, was not the creation of Jeremy Johnson alone. It is, and the Jeremy Johnson, as you know, is the current, co is the current uh, CEO. But in a boy, a, a, a young Nigerian entrepreneur, Christina Sass, who focused on education and training aspects of Andela's model, and Carnival, who contributed to Andela's vision and helped in building the company's strategy. All of these men and women contributed to what uh, became this big $3 billion company. The distinguished chancellor of this university is, as you know, a serially successful entrepreneur. And he's also one who exemplifies the idea of co-creation and collaboration as a principle of ideation, execution, and operation. So when establishing Conga, Nigeria's first and largest online mall, he collaborated with two other innovators, Shola Adekoya and Baba Jimmy uh, Ayoride. Even this university, Miva Open University, is a product of an ongoing collaborative effort between the visioner, uh, Anieke, Anir Keme Umar, who I met just today, who is now the Chief uh, Operation Officer, Ihiai Akwiti, who is now the Chief Academic Officer, and Professor Tayo Arulogun, who is the current Vice Chancellor of the University. The collaborative effort is what we see today. That combined thinking, thinking together, is what we see today as this great uh, online university. And the innovative operationalization of the university itself is also collaborating. MIBA, I'm told, operates not just as a standalone online university, but also as a coordinator of, of a superior learning ecosystem of adjunct lecturers all over the world who can give MIBA students uh, office hours or direct teaching assistance outside of regular teaching regimes of the university. Today, from... Today, from the uh, basic education to tertiary level education, the teaching of collaboration and co-creation are important features of the teaching curricula. Methods that are now used for teaching collaboration and co-creation include project-based learning, design thinking, and of course the design thinking workshops are becoming very popular the deployment of digital collaboration tools. So with platforms now like Slack, like Microsoft Teams and Google Workspace, students and professionals are learning to collaborate digitally across geographical boundaries, co-creating documents, projects, and ideas in real time. And of course, there are many tech companies today who use and teach uh, agile frameworks, which prioritize continuous collaboration and co-creation amongst cross-functional teams to deliver iterative results time and time again. So collaboration is absolutely critical to success in every aspect of human endeavor. I cannot remember who it was who made the wise observation that if you want to walk fast, uh, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, then you must walk together. I had the benefit 
I had to, I had the benefit of speaking to uh, Chancellor Sim Shagaya on the subject of collaboration. And he said, and I quote him, the first question I ask at the stage of development of an idea is who can I work with? The first question I ask at the beginning of a project, when I'm thinking about it is who can I work with? Because that is probably the best answer to the question, will it work? So will it work will depend on who can I work with. And I think that this is so important and a guiding principle for most of us today who are going to become uh, experts of various kinds, entrepreneurs of various kinds. Once again, let me congratulate uh, the matriculating class of 2024. You are the... You are the fortunate uh, beneficiaries of university education at the most advanced moment in human history. You must live up to the challenge of this great opportunity, and I pray that your journey will be smooth and that you will achieve great success. Thank you very much. Let me... So, also... Let me, let, me, let me add also, as an old university professor, when you are um, matriculating, before you graduate, your tassel, this tassel, must be on the right side, not on the left. When you graduate, your tassel moves to the left. Thank you very much.